I'm sure by now you've all seen that the attacks on the Second Amendment are coming out of every orifice of our government and establishment media left and right at a ridiculous pace that almost no one can even keep up with if they tried. You have the obligatory call to repeal the Second Amendment. This has been a feature of every highly politicized mass shooting we've seen in this country since at least Sandy Hook. So you have this piece in the Rolling Stone, Why It's Time to Repeal the Second Amendment by David S. Cohen. And he's saying he teaches the Constitution for a living. He reveres the document when it's used to further social justice or make our country a more inclusive one. And he admires the founders for establishing a representative democracy that survived for over two centuries. But sometimes we just have to acknowledge that the founders and the Constitution are wrong. This is one of those times we need to say loud and clear the Second Amendment must be repealed. Then he goes on to say, as much as we have a culture of reverence for the founding generation, it's important to understand they got it wrong and they got it wrong often. Now, that narrative is actually being killed by people like him who are teaching upcoming generations in liberal colleges all across this country that our founding fathers are actually terrorists. Government is training members of Homeland Security that and the military that the founding fathers are actually the original terrorists in this country. Your founding fathers, my founding fathers, were involved in acts of terrorism against British officials. Who's David S. Cohen? This guy's a law professor who gets classrooms full of young, impressionable college students and teaches them his interpretation of the Constitution, which apparently is that you can just tear certain amendments to shreds after several hundred years if you don't think they're right because the Founding Fathers got it wrong so often. I guess he'll just tear up the whole thing eventually. Then you have this coming back, which we did a report on this back in December, the no-buy list for guns. If there's a no-fly list for terrorists and if people are on the terrorist watch list, we should have a no-buy list for guns. And that's coming out of everyone's mouth right now. People with possible ties to terrorism who aren't allowed on a plane shouldn't be allowed to buy a gun can be on the terrorist watch list, with their, which I just looked up this morning. There are 700,000 people on the terrorist watch list. You can buy a semi-automatic weapon yep. if you're on that list. Not get on an airplane in this country, but you can buy a semi-automatic weapon. This is so tragic, so sad in so many ways. It does offer an opportunity for us, though, to do something immediately about it. And I would hope that we could reach out to our Republican colleagues and say, the least we can do is the no-fly, no-buy legislation we want more of course we want more of course i think actually this one though is my favorite i believe weapons of war have no place on our streets and oh yeah she's shaking her head and everything she's got her hand on her we chest we may have our disagreement if the fbi is watching you for a suspected terrorist links you shouldn't be able to just go buy a gun with no questions asked. <laughs> How about if you're under a criminal investigation by the FBI, you shouldn't be allowed to run for president. How about that, okay? We've talked about this list before. This is an extrajudicial list. It, the process of you getting on such a list is secret from the public. There is no process. They don't call you up and let you know you've been put on the terror watch list. People just end up on it. Case in point, there are eight-year-olds on this list. There are four-year-olds on this list. They took an 18-month-old toddler off a plane for being on this list. Does that look like a terrorist to you? But these are the kind of people who will just immediately have their Second Amendment rights stripped away with no judicial process. And that is what they're calling for. What they keep not saying about this is that the guy that they're claiming did these shootings in this particular situation in Orlando worked for a contractor, one of the largest contractors for Homeland Security. Homeland Security is supposed to be the ones keeping the homeland safe and they allowed that guy to have some pretty high security clearances, obviously. They checked him out and they said he was fine. This is the kind of people that are going to make determinations about who can and can't be on a list. If they had such a list, the point I'm trying to make is that guy would not have been on it. So how is that going to stop what happened in Orlando? It isn't. Then you have this, which is potentially the dumbest argument I think that I have seen made this entire last couple of days since Orlando. And they've done this one before, but they're saying that an AR-15 would have never been approved by the Founding Fathers. That's their argument. They're really going to try and argue that. How about the founding fathers could have never envisioned a government 
with SWAT teams driving armed tanks down U.S. streets to try and enforce a mother not giving antipsychotic medication to her young daughter. Do you think the Founding Fathers ever envisioned that kind of government who would take military weapons of war like MRAPs and place them in Main Street America? Do you think they were thinking about drones and uh, extrajudicial kill lists being signed off by the president every Tuesday or whatever? Do you think the Founding Fathers would have approved of anything that our government has done for decades now? Anything. Can you think of one thing where the Founding Fathers would have been like, yes, that totally falls under the jurisdiction here. Free speech zones and the Patriot Act and the NDAA and all of this. You really think so? I doubt it. So this argument is just as stupid as this woman over here saying people under federal investigation shouldn't be allowed to buy guns. Well, I guess she shouldn't be able to either. Then you have this. This is a video that was put up on Daily News, New York Daily News. They're, they're all over this, by the way. They're posting pictures of of military vets and soldiers who are saying civilians shouldn't be allowed to have these weapons. And then they sent this guy, Gersh Kunstman, to go to a shooting range so he could fire an AR-15. First of all, before I get to the part in the video that's actually the most probably disturbing argument I've seen in this whole entire propaganda parade that we've seen here, Kunstman's down here talking about his experience firing this scary AR-15. And, um... I just, that's not really how his voice is, but it's how my brain hears it when he actually talks. Down here he says, The recoil bruised my shoulder, which can happen if you don't know what you're doing. The brass shell casings disoriented me as they flew past my face. The smell of sulfur and destruction made me sick. The smell of destruction? Really? The explosions, loud like a bomb, gave me a temporary form of PTSD. For at least an hour after the firing of the gun a few times, I was anxious and irritable. Sounds like PMS, and you should probably go um, get that checked out. That, that guy is actually pretty... That's, that's, a, that's a stunning display of masculinity there, Kunstman. What's more concerning to me is what this gun shop owner had to say about what he thinks should be done to keep people with mental issues from getting guns. Listen to this. You, you said you wouldn't sell to someone who was obviously going to use the gun for a bad purpose. Yes. Yeah, so but not course. everybody's like that. How do you, what should the country do about gun owners or gun buyers who shouldn't have the guns? Tough question. In Europe, what I know, if you want to buy a weapon, you have to go through the doctors. They check you the tests, they figure out if you're right over here. He's saying that you should have to go to the doctor and get checked out before you can be allowed to purchase a gun. Doctors have been weaponized against the populace since the enactment of Obamacare. Obama has come out to specifically ask doctors to start asking their patients about the firearms in their homes, the storage of those firearms, whether or not they have a mental illness, whether or not they live with someone who has a mental illness, whether or not they have a small child. These are the kinds of things that the Obama administration has been basically getting doctors to turn into government snitches. Then on top of that, you have the fact that they're saying one in five people in America is mentally ill. What are they basing this on? They're basing this on the DSM-5 which counts so many things as mental illnesses that if you actually look in the book, which I'm, I'm not going to go waste my money buying a copy because the DSM-5 is a lot of BS. It's a bunch of people that get together in a room and vote and decide what mental disorders are. I guess I should trust them all, right? Anyways, just for saying that, by the way, I'm pretty sure I have a mental disorder by their definition. Just do a quick search keyword in this available copy online for the word government and one of the few pages that would allow me to actually view it because it's mentioned elsewhere but they don't let you see them has to do with associated features supporting the diagnosis of delusional disorder and it says the individual may also engage in antagonistic behavior and one of the examples it gives for that is sending hundreds of letters of protest to the government so according to the dsm-5 if you send hundreds of letters of protest to your government which if you really want to protest something, under the First Amendment, seems like a reasonable thing to do. No, actually, that is a side effect of you having a delusional disorder, according to the DSM-5. And as it's been pointed out, the Obama administration is not trying to distinguish between psychotic, sociopathic, dangerous, mental disorders, people who have 
real issues here and someone with say a phobia all mental issues all mental illnesses are equal in the eyes of the obama administration i haven't been to the doctor's office in many years it would take a lot to get me into a doctor's office okay especially how weaponized they have made this whole system with obamacare and everything I, I would rather chop my own leg off and just try to sew it back on myself. But apparently they've been putting up these warnings in doctor's offices. We may disclose your health information to authorized federal officials who are conducting national security and intelligence activities or providing protective services to the president and other important officials. So if it's a matter of national security, then your doctor your doctor's office will provide whatever you tell your doctor any information about you your records anything you say can be passed directly on to the government to the national security agency just so you know jay johnson already came out and said that gun control is a matter of national security meaningful responsible gun control uh, is now part and parcel of homeland security it's critical to public safety but we have to face the fact that meaningful, responsible gun control has to be part of homeland security as well, given the prospect of homegrown, homeborn, violent extremism in this country. So what that means is your medical records, every single American's medical records, free game. It's national security. It's already been declared. It's been declared nationally. And it goes on to say that police can get your medical information without a warrant. And the government can access all your medical files through the Patriot Act. So you have no privacy whatsoever when you step foot into a doctor's office and they're openly calling for doctors to tell law enforcement officials anything you have to say regarding your gun ownership. And they've already started taking guns away from veterans who have PTSD. So they're disarming people under this at a pretty alarming rate. And it just continues on and on and on. So I would say out of all of these things that we've seen in the wake of this shooting, that's probably the most chilling, in my opinion, is calling for openly forcing people to go to a doctor to be diagnosed healthy and sane before they could own a gun. If you're going by this diagnostic manual, I pretty much guarantee if you're even listening to this video, you are probably already ineligible under that criteria for getting a gun. So conspiracy theorists, anybody who has anything negative to say about the government, they're going to label you as having a mental disorder and then they're going to take away your gun. I mean, they're setting up this whole system. It sounds, that sounds paranoid and sounds delusional, right? And it would be if they weren't setting up the entire system to do so. They are. And I just want to say really quick before I stop ranting here that the government doesn't grant you your rights anyway. So the government can't take them away. The Constitution also does not grant rights. It's a piece of paper, okay? It outlines rights that are naturally inherent. All of this is ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. It has nothing to do with what actually happened, and we don't even know what really happened. They're going to politicize it to the hilt, and they're going to just keep hammering away at this because it hasn't worked so far. What I've heard over and over and over is, that they really thought that Sandy Hook was going to do it. What will it take to move the needle when it comes to gun control? People thought it would be Sandy Hook. They really thought it was, but then it didn't. And so now look. We need to do something to minimize the opportunities for terrorists to get a gun in this country. And this is now something that is critical to homeland security as well as public safety. Without infringing on the rights of Without lawful gun Without infringing on the Second Amendment, uh, as interpreted by the Supreme Court. Infringing on the rights of Without lawful gun Without infringing on the Second Amendment, uh, as interpreted by the Supreme Court, as interpreted by the Supreme Court. They're gonna continue to do this. This is not going to stop. 